Boris Johnson lied when he told the House of Commons that they did not break those rules. So this whole argument, really, um, it's all a lot of sophistry. It, it, it's not about did he break the rules. We know he broke the rules. It's about are we willing to forgive him for breaking those rules? Now, in the minds of some of us, the answer must be no. But the Conservative Party is still asking itself the question, is dear old Boris such a winner? Do the British people mm. love him so much that we just forget about all this and we move on and we have good old Boris back there? Now, for some of us, that is going to determine whether we could ever vote Conservative again. It doesn't sound to me as if the, the, the Privileges Committee is going in that direction, but we'll wait and see. Can I ask you, Max, about the other, it seems to me, even bigger event today, which is that we had a vote in the House of Commons around the Prime Minister's renegotiation of the Northern Ireland Protocol and his rapprochement with parts of the EU. And among the 22 Conservative MPs who voted against him, we have Boris Johnson, we have Liz Truss, we have Jacob Rees-Mogg, we have a huge range of the most the best known right wingers in the country. And I wonder, is this the beginning of a kind of semi split or a disaffection on the right of the Conservative Party? Rishi Sunak versus the right. I think it could well be. I remember hearing um, a Tory sage, Bill Deeds, saying 40 years ago he thought Europe could break the Conservative Party, and that's the way to bet. But what seems to some of us important is that we want to be part of a Britain with a future. We do not want to be part of a Britain with a past. And all these right-wingers that The Economist wrote very vividly that Jacob Rees-Mogg belonged in a museum, not a cabinet. And um, that's how most of us feel. We feel, for God's sake, do we have to go on with all this nonsense about um, um, sovereignty and about um, all these issues from the past of Britain. And those people who voted today, the Ian Duncan Smiths, the Liz Trusses, these are all people of the past. We've got to move on. Now, if Rishi Sunak can do that, um, last night I was at Michael Heseltine's 90th birthday party, and of the 300 people who were there, that almost everybody there wanted Rishi Sunak to succeed. Mm. That whatever your political convictions, this feeling that this is a good guy, this is somebody who's trying to do the right thing for Britain. So we want to support Rishi Sunak if we can. But if those lunatics on the right wing of the Conservative Party succeed in dragging down Rishi Sunak, then we can't be part of all this. And there was a Johnson there as well. And there was a Johnson there as well, Stanley Johnson. And um, um, the whole clan, um, the misery and the trouble they brought on Britain, I find it very hard to be civil to any member of that family because what grief they brought on our country. So that's something quite extreme to say about, about Boris Johnson. I mean, you know, there are plenty of people, even now, who say he was the great leader who won that huge victory in 2019. He was the leader who delivered Brexit. Now, we can have arguments about Brexit, but it seems to me that your problem with Johnson goes deeper than that. A few years ago, um, a very old friend of mine who's since accepted a peerage from Boris Johnson and with whom um, I haven't had any traffic ever since as a result. And she said to me about Boris, she said, get real, Max, we're in the post-truth age. And she was arguing that the fact that Boris Johnson is a serial liar doesn't matter. Now, some of us believe that it matters hugely. Some of us believe that today is a critical moment for Britain because we've got to try and get away from this. We've got to try and get back to um, a world and to a body politic um, in which um, whether you are a, um, tell the truth or you're a liar really matters. Now, I happen to believe that Rishi Sunak is a truth teller. And I think that's one of the reasons why I terribly want him to succeed and why, if I can, one will support him. We have to see off these serial liars that um, the essence of the whole Boris Johnson story, of the whole Boris Johnson narrative, um, is that Boris has said, yeah, I'm a liar, I'm a chancellor, I'm all the other things, but who cares? Mm. Some of us, the British people, care terribly. So what's going on in the House of Commons today, what's going on in front of the, the Privileges Committee, is not a small parliamentary story from your point of view. It really is about the soul, not just of the Conservative Party, but of parliamentary democracy. It's what sort of Britain um, we want to live in. And if we can't see off these terrible people, 
um, then one does begin to feel certainly that one couldn't, couldn't vote Conservative again, um, but also one feels um, um, terrible things for the body politic of our country. Um, let's just talk a little bit about the tactics in the weeks ahead, days and weeks ahead. In terms of the Privileges Committee, if they uh, recommend that he's to be suspended from Parliament for 10 days or more, there could well be a by-election, there probably will be a by-election in Uxbridge, and it's hard to see him winning that. So that's the end of his political career. But if he manages to get through this committee, do you seriously think he will try to come back, that there will be a sort of prince across the water? I don't think you can write off Boris Johnson until he's buried at a crossroads with a stake driven through his heart. Um, but on the other hand, I think that he is a blight, um, not only on the Conservative Party, but on the British body politic. Um, that it's a question of whether the Conservative Party have the courage to move on, have the courage to say, um, this man has done terrible things to our country, he's done terrible things to our party, this must come to an end. Now, I'm not sure that they have the guts to do that, but this is what we're going to find out in the um, hours and days ahead. Uh, 22 people voted against the government tonight, but around 45, 46, 47, 48 abstained as well. I think 48 abstained. That's quite a large group of people. Does Rishi Sunak from now on therefore have to be incredibly careful about how he deals with post-Brexit, European issues in particular? Is he now somebody whose real majority is close to zero? I think Rishi Sunak has got to display the guts um, to show real leadership, and I think the British people want him to do that. But yes, you've got these lunatics out there who are trying to bring down Sunak, who are trying to bring back Johnson, who are obsessed with the European issue. But for some of us, the key test of Rishi Sunak is whether he has the nerve to call down these people, not to bow to them, not to negotiate with them, not to parley with them, but to say that the Jacob Rees-Mogg School of Life, the Ian Duncan Smith School of Life, that these people, frankly, in the eyes of most of the people, they're nutters. That they don't realise we live next mm. door to Europe, mm. even if we're outside Europe. Um, we have got to work with Europe. This is what Sunak's trying to do. This is what they're trying to stop him doing. And I believe he's got to see them off. It's worth reflecting a little bit on Rishi Sunak himself, because... Um, you know, he can seem very over-eager to please, and yet when it comes to these issues, he's been pretty steely. He was asked in America if he would help Boris Johnson if the Privileges Committee uh, laid down a harsh punishment, and he said no. He does seem to be somebody who's prepared, who is up for this fight. We have to hope for it. We have to hope that the Johnson era is going to come to be perceived in the years ahead um, as a sort of dreadful aberration, as something that the British people realised was a disaster and that the Conservative Party now has the courage to realise was a disaster and to consign, to send Boris Johnson back where he belongs up to the music halls. He is a brilliant journalist, he's a brilliant entertainer. He had no place in British public life. Do you think this is an existential threat now for the Conservative Party? I think the Conservative Party are in a very dangerous place. Um, I don't think the Conservative Party has been written off many times, mm. and I don't believe this is going to be the end for the Conservative Party. But unless they can come to terms with this, unless they can um, behave like decent people and behave as I think most of the British people want them to behave, um, then I think the, uh, can, they're heading for a period in the electoral wilderness, which it will take them many years to come back from.